Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how we put a roof on. Uh, the building I put on today is five meters by three meters. And if you're more than three meters, then we'll double up the joist because the roof spans too big for the five by two. Um, so basically, what it is, is there's your building. It's three meters and it's five meters wide. So if they're your walls looking from above. Um, your first timber goes on there next to that one. I'm going to put another timber on there next to that one. I'm then going to pull a string line from there to there, which will then enable me to put all my timbers on nice and straight with the string line. Made a bit of a balls up with the timber, but I'll explain that in the video. So they'll, they'll be on my roof joist. I will then put a, the front timber on like that and the back timber on like that, and that will hang over both sides like that. I will then put the side trimmer on, and then I will put a series of noggings along there like that. Put that side trimmer on there. A series of noggings along there like that. Um, I'll also put some timbers down there to support these noggings and to fix this timber to that wall. Same with there, timbers down there. And then I will put a series of noggings right down the building as such. And that will be your basic roof structure. We've got a 300mm overhang on the front, which the black soffit is 300mm, so that'll sit nicely on there. We've got 100mm soffit goes around the back and the sides. Um, I've used 180 spacer blocks there, so by the time that's finished, the black soffit will sit under and then the cedar will butt up to that and cover that. So that's it, your basic roof. The front wall is 75mm higher than the back, so the water will run that way. Um, and that's it basically. So if you want to watch the video, if you want to like it and share it, if you could and subscribe, that'd be wonderful. And also don't forget, I'm going to do the generic plans. So if you want to drop me a message and let me know what size you might be interested in and I'll crack on with them as well. Okay, thanks for your support. And to the two guys, I've seen one up top of Penn again on Saturday. And I've just seen one just down near my local pub and both recognise me off YouTube, which is also hilarious. And say hi if you do see me anyway. Thank you and I hope you enjoy. Right, so in this video I'm going to show you how to put roof on. I am here on my own today. This building is uh, is five meters wide. It's three meters deep. We've made the front wall, um, I think it's 75 mil higher than the back wall. We normally drop it 25 mil for every meter. So over three meters there we've got 75 mil difference between front and back wall. Uh, we don't use furrings, we used to use furrings, but they came at all different sizes and it caused pulling on the roof then when it was done. So what we do is we drop the front wall higher than the back wall and it gives you maximum head height inside. You never notice the little pitch in the roof either. Uh, the only time you do notice it is, like say for instance, you put a TV on that wall, the TV would be level, but the roof would be running up as such. Uh, it's not a great thing, but that's how we build them. So what we've done, we've put steel in there. See the steel in? That'll carry above the door. We've fixed these timbers to there with some tech screws. Um, that'll aid us then when we put the roof joists on, we can strap them down. I'll throw these timbers up on the roof because it's going to be a bit of a ball ache on my own, but um, we'll get there and I'll show you how we'll do it. Right, so there's the first timber. Um, what it wants to be is in line with that wall there. So that, that outside edge there wants to be in line with that edge of the wall there. And then when you plasterboard your roof, You've got something to screw to there, um, so you can see the pitch in there. What I've done as well, um, I've looked down the timber and there's a slight bow, and to exaggerate it goes like that, so you put that upright and then you won't get no pooling, because if you turn it the other way and then your bow goes down, then you've got a chance of getting pooling of water, so all bows need to go upright. Um, I've cut the spacer block here, that there gives me my distance out. So what I'll do is I'll fix this one, fix one at that end, put a string line on, and then um, put all my other roof joists up to the string line. But what I've actually done this one, I've made a bit of a balls up. Um, I've ordered the wrong size timbers, not quite long enough to hang over the back. So what I'll do is I'll just extend them all as well. Obviously, I've ordered these now and they're here, so we're gonna work with them. So I'll fix that and I'll show you timbers now. That one over there and this one here. And the distance off I used the spacer. And by the time we put the front plate on there, that'll give us our 300 for our soffit on there. So I've used this string line now, look, put a nail on there. String line there is going across that front of that timber. It's pulled nice and tight. So what I'll do now is I'll put all these timbers and butt them up to the string line like such at the spaces. The reason why we use a string line and not just measure it off there is if the building, say for instance to exaggerate, bellies in or bellies out, then the roof will belly in and belly out. Whereas this now will be perfectly straight. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fix all them timbers to the roof um, and space them off with 400 spacers. 
And then we'll go from there. So when we cut this insulation, all this insulation will be cut the and that'll fit in there. So I'll put that roof timber up to there. I've already rotated this so that the, the bow is to the top. I've then brought it forward to meet the string line. Such. There you go. And what I'll do now, because I'm on my own, I know that's right now, so I can jump in there and fix to that, bring my spacer to the back, fix to that, and then we'll do the same procedure all the way down with all the rest of the roof. Here's a perfect example. I don't know if you can see that bow. So there's a bow to this side, um, and this side it bows in. So what we want then, we want the bow to the top, so that any water runs off rather than pooling in a dip. So like I said, we'll put all the bows to the top. We're all running down the string line. We've used this 400 spacer there to space them so that we can cut all the insulation the same size. This last one now, it's not wide enough to fit the 400, so I'm just going to use this block, drop that in there, use that block down at the end there as well, to space it evenly, and then we'll have a nice even space base for when we insulate it as well. When, I, when the roof's all finished, I'll spike down through the top of there into there, which will secure that timber to the top plate there. But I don't have the luxury of getting a good fixing above the steel. That's why we've fixed these off. Two purposes really, so that we can put these upside down joist hangers to secure the roof to the steel and also so we can plasterboard it as well. Now, it's very important that you do actually secure this roof down properly because it's, if the wind gets up at that, like a sail and even a mild, maybe 40, 50 mile an hour wind, will rip the thing clean off. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fix all the joist hangers and not secure the roof down and then I'll show you how to do the side trimmers and the back which I've obviously balls up because I have a long of timber but we'll get over that as we always yeah, do. roof um, strapped down to the steel there. Uh, I've used them upside down joist hangers and I've fixed them with these. It's getting the right there so you can see them. Fix them there. No, that's no good. Fix them there with these little twist nails. Um, got them on my own so what I've done I've put a little block of wood down there which will support that end and what we want to do we want to join because they're not long enough so we're going to join them on the centre of one of them so that we, we you know we run flush all the way down rather than join them in, in the middle and have a risk of a dip or a bump one we'll drop that on there and let that overhang as well and then we'll uh, address the back situation whatever's going on there as soon as I have the wrong test timbers I'm having to put a little block on now to bring the end trimmer out so that we've got enough there for the soffit to go on. Um, so doing the same again, putting the string line all the way down. And then these 200 blocks I'll bring to the line, nail to the side of that timber there, and that'll be as good as the wear in the first place anyway. But as I said before, you need to pin these roofs down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spike it first like that. I'll do that on both sides. And then what I'll do then, um, I'll just hammer them nails in. Sorry, left-handed. Hammer them flat. And then when I push that on there, that will sit flush. I'll put it up to that line as such. Nail that, and then we'll be good. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the side trimmer on. So I've got the front trimmer and the back trimmer hang over. I've cut these blocks, they're 180. They'll go onto the internal one and support the side trimmer. I've marked them on there, so they're going to get fixed. I've put a block over there because I'm on my own to carry the weight of that one and as I said before I balled up. Uh, oh, 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 I'll make mistakes sometimes. Uh, I've got 3.6s when I should have got 4.2 so I've joined one together 
um, and we'll then put on this side trimmer by ourselves. So I've, I've fixed that block underneath there just to carry the weight of that so that I can manage to do this on my own. So I've now fixed that far end over there. I've now got this to my line there. And I will now nail that to that and that's the side trimmer on. And I'll show you how then we support the weight of it and take out that flex and bounce of it as well. So that's the side trimmer on. See I've joined it there because it won't long enough. Um, but there's a lot of flex in that and it's also sagging down a little bit. So what I'm going to do now, we've got these 180 blocks. I'm going to pop that in there like that and then I'm going to fix it to there. I'll then lift that so that it's flush with that and fix to there. But then we still need something means of stopping that from sagging down. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone. What we're going to do, we're going to put a piece of fibre two in there, which will in turn let the plasterboard fix to it, fix it through there at the bottom. And then we'll fix through there, which then will make this first timber solid. That one will be solid and fixed to the wall plate. And then we will then fix that through into this timber as well so that that will carry the weight of that the weight of that and sit on that wall there right so i've got this bit of 7 by 2 700 long what i'm going to do is drop it down on the inside of this first one it's then sat onto the top wall plate there and if you then look on the underside there what i'll do then i'll screw that up through there and then that'll give the plasterboard something to fly to i will also fix that timber that first roof timber into the side of there so that one will be solid that will be solid. We've got something to fix the plasterboard to there. And then on this side up here at the top, what I'll do then, you have to excuse the camera work I'm on my own. I'll drop that 180 block in there. I'll fix that block then through there into that. I'll fix it into that. And then I will then fix this outside timber into that, which then will create all that. Same level as that, solid, not moving anywhere. Is that put in? Put the fibre to an all which is fixed to the top of the wall plate which gives the plasterboard some it's fixed to which then makes that first timber solid and i can put my row of noggings all the way down there and then they'll brace off that so all i need to do now is trim off that bit there trim off this bit remove this packer and then that's that side of the roof done i'll jump on the back one there jump on that other side trimmer and then i'll get the row of noggings um two rows of noggings all the way down the middle right. okay so the roof's three meters deep um so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put two rows of noggings in so I've marked a metre in there and a metre in from that side and I've pinged the chalk line, I don't know if you can see that, all the way down from both sides. So what I'll do is I'll put two rows of noggins, one down there, one down there, metre in, metre in, and then that'll be it, that'll be your roof complete. I'll jump back off, we'll have a look, a look around it and then we'll have a little chat about it and then that'll be it. So there's your roof, full roof, it's finished now. We've used 5v2 timber, um, we've used Joist hangers to strap it down where the steel is. We've spiked it on the top of the wall plate to stop the wind from ripping it up. I showed you how to put your front trimmer on, showed you how to do your side trimmers, showed you how to do your infill, so your plasterboard, and to hold your side to hold that first timber there as well. Done your back trimmer as well. I've done that far trim over there, and I've done the row of noggins all the way down and all the way down up there as well. Two rows of noggins. So your full roof, five by two. We've used uh, password fixing it we've also used as you can see it there Makita circular saw because the guys have got the chops on a different job so that's it that's the real finish now um just needs boarding and rubber and soffits and fascias which i'll show you to do as well